Welcome back and we are now joined by Colin Shah live on the show. Colin, hi, good to have you. You know, uh, jewellery sector and gold and silver prices is something that the markets have been talking about. As the prices rise, uh, the demand for jewellery seems to be now consolidating, even tapering down. How have you seen the trends? Uh, the trends uh, so far, uh, Manisha, uh, very positive in the US. Okay. We were, uh, as an industry, worried because uh, after summer, we saw a reasonable softening up, I would say, on of the demand on the American side. But the last uh, few weeks has been very positive. And going into Christmas, it does look like uh, the numbers will be close to last year. You know, we don't uh, expect uh, a very high growth, but uh, they'll be close to last year. The one interesting trend which has come out is that uh, it always used to be the generation between 45 and uh, 55, which used to be the largest consumers of uh, diamond jewelry in the US or even globally. But uh, you know the trend this year so far has been that Gen Z is spending four times the money that they did in 2018 and 19 on gems and jewelry. So that's a very interesting, healthy trend for our sector. And uh, going forward, we see that uh, you know, which will help uh, propel the industry forward. All right, so, so Gen, Z, Gen Z coming into the folds as well. But, uh, you know, I was looking at the numbers, Colin, and uh, whether it's about uh, gems and jewellery exports, that number, the, or, the overall number, or you look at the gold-studded number, even the lab-grown diamond number has uh, seen a big gain for the month of November and between April to November as well. Yeah, on the lab-grown side, you're saying, right? Yes. Yeah, so lab-grown, we've seen a tremendous uh, growth of nearly uh, 50%. And, uh, you know, we, we do expect as an industry also that over the next uh, three to five years, it should climb up to becoming 10% of our overall, uh, you know, export basket. Of course, natural diamonds will continue to be the leader and India will only consolidate its, uh, you know, I guess, position on that front. But uh, lab grown, uh, if uh, with the correct uh, policy support from the government, we've had uh, several meetings as an industry also with them. We really do expect uh, that uh, that India can be market leaders in this industry, right from uh, growing to cutting and polishing to manufacturing jewelry to ultimately retailing uh, in every market across the world. So that, cool. that's what we. Oh, well, yes. Colin, I was also going through your uh, wish list for the budget this time around and the lab-grown diamonds as an industry features theirs as well. But what are the other levels or other points that you're looking for from this budget? Thanks, Manisha. So, uh, from this budget, the one one the good thing going into a budget always is that uh, the government has robust tax collections, you know, on mm -hmm. the direct and indirect side. So, we are hoping that considering our industry is not looking for any incentives as such, it's more uh, things on the ease of doing business, uh, the government will help us with uh, whatever we've asked for. So, one, the first thing that we've asked for is, uh, you know, abolition of duty on the on on the seeds which are used for lab-grown diamonds. Mm. Now, this will really help, uh, especially because there's a very high-tech, uh, you know, which is required to manufacture the seed, and it's not available in India right now. This will really help the lab-grown industry to go to the next level. Secondly, we really believe that we we have the potential as India to being the repair capital of the world. You know, we have this uh, we have millions of craftsmen who can manufacture any kinds of jewelry. But right now, our policy is such that we can only repair jewelry which we have exported you know, okay. out of India. Hmm. While we really feel that there is huge potential that even if a piece of jewelry is being manufactured, say in France, Italy, Germany, anywhere in the world, if this could be imported into India for repairing, it would help the Indian manufacturer to connect with many more consumers and get access to global tech. So we're really hoping that we have a repair policy to be the global repair capital. Uh, we have these special notified zones, which were started uh, four or five years back, and where rough diamonds come in from miners across the world for viewing okay. in Mumbai and Surat. But they're not able to sell over here. These roughs have to go back because we don't have a presumptive taxation. Hmm. So if that is done, you know, it will be great for India because, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make revenue which work we weren't making earlier. All right. And technically, our manufacturer will have access. He doesn't have to travel to Botswana, Russia. Angola, you know, different parts of the world to buy his rough diamonds. Okay. He can do anything in Mumbai, Sudan. Hmm. So, so that we really hope is done. And then last but not the least is the diamond impress license. So we used to have this license, but then this license was abolished when the diamond duty was 0%. But then once it went up from 2.5, 5, 7.5, back to 5, what has really happened is there is huge beneficiation happening across the world. Okay. You know, in, in Russia and uh, in um, uh, Botswana especially, there is pressure on our diamond manufacturers to set up factories there, 
and cut and polish in those countries. Now, with beneficiation being a reality, uh, we are hoping that this impress yeah. license is reintroduced so that the industry, which our government has so nicely nurtured, I would say, over the last 40, 50 years, continues to stay global leaders. If they're able to import 5% of their last three years turnover as in, you know duty-free cut and polish diamonds. All right. This will help our industry to survive and thrive in India. All right. So that's the list for the budget, uh, the wish list that is uh, coming in from... Uh... Colin Shaw of Kamajula. So clearly, I'm uh, hoping that the finance minister takes a look at that as well. But as always, thank you so much, Colin, for joining us to talk about the trends and the budget wish list as well. With that, uh, we'll go for a break. Coming back with Business Lunch on the other side.